click on that link and uh, complete that register. Uh, select basic statistics for human science. And it uh, probably it has your module code next to it. So every week you come in, make sure you complete the register. And if you forgot, I will remind you at closer to the end of the session or during the session just to keep track of everyone so that everyone is able to complete the session <clears throat> or the, the register. If you have any technical issues uh, with the recordings, with the notes or with anything relating to the platform that we are using, send an email to ctmtat at unisa.ac.za. If you have content related issues, like you've got comments or questions, you are struggling with certain topics, you can send an email to eboyem at unisa.ac.za alternative <coughs> and copy CT and TAT at unisa.ac.za. Um, <clears throat> um, there is also an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one consultations, but those we prioritize based on the num the people who attend the session. So if you come in every week to re um, and complete the register, you will stand a chance of your um, request being prioritized as well because we also want to serve those who uh, participate <clears throat> as well. Not that we're not going to serve everyone, but I mean, we've got limited hours. So uh, make sure that you attend the sessions. And if you have any questions, you can request for one on one session with me. So today we're going to um, deal with calculating the Z score and how we we find the probability of a z-score. That's the only thing that we're going to be doing when we are given the mean and the standard deviation and how we interpret the z-score. So therefore, it means you need to have your tables with you, your probability tables, and I'm going to show you how, uh, what it looks like. And if you don't have it, probably you need to find the old... Um, past exam paper or some way your lecture should have given you at some point some way in one of the tutorial letters the normal probability tables but if not then I will show you and I can always share with you also um, where we post the notes so then next week we're going to learn about the basic probabilities it's very important to learn all this uh, because most of the things that we're going to be doing in your module, you're going to use probability. So if you know the concept of probabilities, you will be able to sail through your module as well. <clears throat> so, and I must just apologize. Um, I'm recovering from flu and fever. So or fever and flu or something like that, similar to that. So my throat is uh, coarse and um, itchy and I will keep on clearing it. So please <clears throat> don't get irritated by all the, the noises you hear. Um, yeah, so we can start with this week's session. Remember, we're going to also always apply the problem solving um, Newman's uh, prompts, where we ask ourselves what is it that we are given? What is the question asking us to do? What are the facts given in the question? Is there a formula that I need to use? Is there a table that I need to know how to use to answer this question? And then I can start doing the calculation and then giving feedback. We're going to do that throughout the session as well because our sessions are skills sessions. So in order for you to complete this session, uh, <coughs> sorry, you require formulas and you require a calculator, and I forgot to put there, you require a table, a statistical table. So when we talk about the Z-score, we want to actually normalize your data or standardize your um, raw data. And with that, we talk about normal distribution. And when we talk about normal distribution, it's a belly shaped curve. And you will notice that sometimes in your assignments and in your 
exam, you will be given questions with a belly shaped curve and they will ask you to answer certain questions. So it's a normal distribution that they have given you and they will expect you to answer question based on that. And a normal distribution, it's a distribution that is symmetrical. Therefore, it means the mean, the median and the mode are always equal for a normal distribution. <coughs> and the location of your normal distribution is determined by the central tendency measure, which is the mean, which is always equals to zero, and the standard deviation, which is one of the measure of dispersion, which is denoted by one, uh, <clears throat> which will be equals to one. When we talk about normal distribution, we also talk about the area underneath the curve because, like I said, it's a belly shaped curve. So we always concentrate on the values that are underneath the curve. And the curve will never touch the x axis if this is our x axis, and the y axis is our probability or our function, our density function. So if here yeah, we're we representing probabilities, therefore we're talking about the area underneath this curve, we should be able to calculate the probabilities of those area. And that is what most of the time when we do probability questions, we will be calculating those probabilities, which are your areas underneath the curve. And that area underneath the curve, it's always going to be between zero and one. It can never be negative and it can never be post, um, no it can never be uh, negative but <clears throat> it will be between zero and one and now here i'm talking about the probabilities next week when we deal with probabilities we will still cover this um some of these concepts as well so the, today we're not going to cover probabilities in too much detail but we just brush it uh, brush it off so the probabilities should always be between zero and one, and the sum of all probabilities should always be equal to one. It can never be more than one. So, <clears throat> so the sum of all probabilities, so if I add all the probabilities underneath the curve, they should give me a sum of one. Um, the other property that you need to know is if you increase the value of your standard deviation, which is denoted by the sigma, you will notice even when we do the Z score, we're going to be using some of these letters. So this is called sigma. So when we increase the sigma or when the, the value of your sigma changes and it increases, then uh, it means your spread or your, your curve. Uh, also increase in terms of the shape. So <clears throat> if this is one standard deviation, because we set a normal distribution, it's one standard deviation away from the mean. Um, another graph, if we have a two standard deviation, it will look like somehow like that, because the distance between the mean and the, and the outside of the curve of this red will be two standard deviation. And if it moves again, and it might look like this, it might look like this because then the distance also, you can see that it has increased by X amount. So when your sigma, when your standard deviation increases, your graph either becomes narrower or it becomes flatter. So the smaller, your standard deviation, your flatter the curve will be. The, <clears throat> and it will be like that and like that all the time. And when it comes, uh, <clears throat> and when actually I was drawing it, um, yeah, so the, the, the bigger, as it increases, your graph will become uh, flatter. And as it increases, the graph becomes flatter. And when it um, the standard deviation decreases, the uh, graph becomes narrower. As your mean changes, 
it shifts only the graph from left to right. So the mean shifts the graph from left to right. So it just moves left to right. And that is your normal distribution. In order for us to standardize the raw data, we use the formula, the Z, uh, Z score or what we call Z distribution formula. And your Z score is just your raw score minus the population mean divide by the standard deviation. Your population mean you will be given in the statement. Your standard deviation you will be given in the statement. In the question, they will give you your raw value and they will ask you what is the Z score or they will ask you whether there are differences because you can use your Z score to determine whether there are gaps or differences between groups as well because you can look at the bigger the score, the bigger the, your Z value, it means your data has more of the outliers. The smaller your Z score, it means your data is more closely to a normal. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of outliers as well. And an outlier will be the value that is far away from the rest of the other values as well. <laughs> and always remember that your Z score is distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. These are some of the properties that you need to know in order for you to answer some of the questions in your assignment and in your exam as well. So how do we standardize the score? Let's look at this example. If X is distributed with the normal, uh, is distributed normally with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 50, the Z value for X of 200 would be. So we need to go back and ask ourselves, what is it that we are asked to do? So we are asked to calculate the Z value. So it means we need to calculate the Z score. What is it that they have given us? So we need to identify our fact. The first fact we can identify is that the mean is equals to 100. So therefore, our mean we know that is denoted by mu. We did discuss this last time. Our mean is denoted by mu. So we have our mean, the standard deviation of 50, and our standard deviation is denoted by sigma. <clears throat> So since I've identified all the facts, but not all in the question, the Z value for X, so they gave me my raw score X. So I don't even have to identify it because they already made it easy for us by giving us the X value as a letter X. So I need to identify what are the things that are going to help me answer this question. The first thing is knowing the Z score formula. So I know that I'm going to use the Z score. So here is my Z score. I just need to substitute already have identified my values. So I just substitute into the formula. Your X is 200. Your mean is 100. Your sigma is 50. I just substitute. Then I take my calculator and start calculating. OK. I do have an online calculator. Let's hope it's not going to disappoint me and it's going to work. And there is my calculator. <clears throat> Depending on the type of a calculator that you have, I use a Casio calculator. If you have a sharp calculator or a normal calculator, the calculator on your phone is still fine. You can still use that. You don't need a fancy calculator to do your module. But it's very important that you um, uh, invest in your studies. So one of the investment is going to buy, go and buy a casual calculator because when we come to the regression and the correlations, you will need um, something that will simplify your life. But I will share that with you in no time uh, when we get to that point. So <clears throat> my Casio calculator, it has the fraction. So if you go to the shop and you want to buy a similar calculator, you need to look for the one that has a fraction button, even though it's Casio. Sometimes it's expensive. Don't buy a too expensive calculator. Any calculator, even if it's not a Casio, it can be Casio. In ShopRite, they sell a Casio. It also has a fraction button like this. 
they also have non-brand calculators that also have the same. You can buy those ones. You don't have to buy a 500 or 600 calculator. So <clears throat> because my one has a fraction, I can use it to do the calculation. 200 minus 100 divide by, then you need to also use the arrows, divide by 50 to go down. And the answer is equals to two. And that is my answer. And that's how you find your Z score. If you don't have a Casio calculator or you're using a normal calculator from your phone anywhere, always remember to use um, your calculator properly. So 200 minus 100. Because it's the top part, I need to say equal. If you don't do equal and just go ahead and do divide, the divide will divide 100 by 50, not the answer. So you need to say equal so that you get the answer for the top part. Then you can say divide by 50. And the answer that you will get will still be the same as 2. Alternatively, I'm not going to do this for all the slides. I'm just showing you at the beginning. Alternatively, you can use the bracket for the top part because there are two values. Put them in the bracket. 200 minus 100. Close the bracket. Divide because the sign here is a division. It says divide by 50. Then you just divide by 50. What the bracket does, it will solve whatever is inside the bracket first before it does the division. So if I click equal, and I will still get the same answer. And that is one of the skills that I can show you on your calculator. But coming back to statistics, how do we then interpret this? We can say that our X of 200, it is two standard deviation or two increments of 50 units above the mean of 100. And that's how we can interpret the Z score. <clears throat> Are there any questions before we look at more examples from your module? Remember, I, I cannot see there uh, the chat when I am uh, discussing. So if you have any question, please feel free to raise your hand or uh, sometimes I won't be able to see my hand. Um, no, you need to look for, on your on the register, please look for basic statistics. Uh -uh. Basic statistics. Uh, what is it called? Basic statistics for human science. Um, if it's not there, Probably it is called the rich search analytics. If it's not there, it should be called research analytics because I remember the last time we were calling the session research ana analytics. Okay. Yeah. So you just need to find the right one. Okay. <laughs> I see that there are no questions. So let's move on to <laughs> exercise. So this exercise comes from one of the tutorial letters. I, I forgot to type to take the the name of the tutorial letter, but I think it was 2021. Oh. was 2021 tutorial letter so it reads as follows the marks in the different subject of patrick a high school people are represented in the table below his marks for different subjects are given along with the mean and the standard deviation of each of the the subject for all the learners in his class so they took the class mean or the class average and the standard deviation of the class uh, marks. Use the information in this table to answer the following questions below. 
In which subject did Patrick do best relative to his uh, class? So we need to calculate the Z score for Patrick for all the subjects. There are four subjects. I'm going to do one. You're going to do two, uh, all three. And then we're going to look at the scores afterwards, right? So I'll start with the mathematics one so that I show you how to do that and then you can do the rest. <coughs> so the Z score for maths, I'm just going to put the maths. It's given by, we know that the formula is X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Our X will always be our X will be Patrick's uh, score. Our mean for every question. I'm sorry about that. I'm just wiping my nose. Our mean and our standard deviation. So we're just going to substitute the values. Because these values are in percentages, it doesn't really matter whether you convert the percentage. <laughs> um, to decimals, but since I'm, I'm a mathematician, I would prefer to convert them. So a 56% is the same as 0 0.56. You can use 56% if you want. Uh, the mean of 42 minus 0 0.42, because I just divide 42 by 100. A percentage, if I want, don't want to use a percentage, I just need, I, I just use I just divide the percentage by 100 to convert it to a relative value. Divide by my standard deviation of 0 0,06. Because 6%, if I show you, 6 divided by 100 is 0 0,06. So if you have a case here and you get answers like this in a fraction format, sorry, <clears throat> you can just press the SD, it changes your answers to because. a decimal. Uh, can you please okay, okay, mute like yourself, uh, whoever is unmuted and they are busy? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so now we can just calculate. Just gonna move my calculator this side this time. 0 0.56, 0 0.56 minus 0 0.42, not, not that. 0 0.42 equals, <clears throat> and I can just divide the answer by 0 0.06 equals. On your calculator, you don't have to put 0, 0,0. You can just put 0, 0.0 some number. It will also know that that is a 0. So, <clears throat> so yeah, the answer is 2.33. 2.33. So do the rest. <clears throat> do for science and for geography, and then we will come back to it just now. I'm going to give you five minutes. Mm -hmm. Or even less. Just try to do it. There is no right or wrong answer. I'm just going to show you because practice makes perfect. The more you try, the more you do, the more you learn. 
<clears throat> don't just wait for me to give you the answers. Are you winning? Yes. That's good. Are we done? Are oh, we still busy? I'm done. Okay. Others? Yes, I'm done. Okay. I hear no one saying I'm still busy, so I'm going to assume that everyone is done. <clears throat> so then let's let's calculate for science. Who wants to do that? I'm not putting you on the spotlight if you want. Okay. Is 0 0.54 minus 0 0.54 because it's 54 and 54 divide by 0 0.04. Now, 0 0.54 minus 0 0.54 is equals to zero. Zero divided by any number will stay the same as zero. So it's not gonna change. So 0 0.54 minus 0 0.54 is 
So we know now <clears throat> the z is zero. For geography, anyone who wants to try? Nobody. Hmm. And I'll do it. I'll okay. Who? Okay, this is Leone speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have geography. I I didn't use a zero uh, point. It's, I just used fine. 62. Yeah. 62 minus 50. It gives me 12 divided by 8. It gives me 1.5. 1.5. It will still give you the same whether you use the zero point or you use percentages. It will still give you the same. And for for this purpose, for this one, um, yeah. not converting can still get you there. But in a in a proper, if I need to teach you the right way of doing things, you need to convert it to a mm. decimal. But for this purpose, um, it's still gonna give you the same. Okay. Okay. So who wants to oh, do okay. history so next time? Yeah. Who wants to do history? Okay, history will be 0, 0,68 minus 0, 0,75 divide by 0, 0,05. And so I'm just going to use my calculator 0, 0.68 minus 0. 0.75 divide by 0, 0.05 equals and change and that is minus 1.4 <clears throat> so we do have all our z i'm just going to put them close to one another of 1.5 and z of minus 1.4 so looking at this how you will interpret this uh remember how we interpreted the, the other one, the previous one, we said it is two standard deviation, which is two increments of the 50 away from the mean, right? So with this one, it's the same thing. So it will tell you how far is Patrick's score from the rest of the class. The closer your Z score is, it means he scored almost relative to the class. If the Z score is bigger, it means he scored better than the class. That is how you can interpret this. So if we look at this <clears throat> from the process of elimination, history, he scored less than the average class, right? But it's 1.4 uh, less than the average class. Um, geography scored 1.5 above the average class. So it um, uh, 1.4 and 1.5, almost similar. Zero, it means they scored almost the same. His scores and the average class are exactly the same because it, there is no distance between the two. Mathematics, he scored 2.33 away from their uh, class. So it means, in order for us to answer this question, in which subject did Patrick do best relative to his class? The answer would be, drum roll, do, 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 do. which one? Maths. It will be mad because he performed way much better than the rest of the class because his scores was two standard deviation away from the rest of the class. And that's how you will answer the questions. So it, the, the, the challenge also with multiple choice questions is that <clears throat> sometimes you have to work three times or four times as much before you can get to the answer. And here is one of those cases. You spend almost five minutes to more than five minutes to answer this question. 
<clears throat> so now let's look at how we can find probabilities because probabilities help us also to give us the proportion. It tells you what is the exact proportion of the differences or the proportion of those row scores. Um, <clears throat> and we use that by finding the Z score because if we find the Z score, we can use the Z score to go find the value of your probability. So for example, like I said, the probability is the area underneath the curve. So I'm going to run through this as quickly as possible, and then we're going to get to the exercises. So since we know that the area underneath the curve is the probability, if we need to find the probability of Z score less than a value, which will be the value that we get, which is these values are what we're going to call A. All these values are what I'm calling, I'm referring to as A's, right? So <clears throat> if we need to find the Z score of less than a value, it's very important to pay attention to this sign. If they say less, less than or oh, equal, less than or oh, equal, we can also use equal, less than or equal. You need <clears throat> to read your table as follows. If the answer of your Z score, apologies, if your answer of your Z score is negative, let's look at our previous question. Like, for example, for history, it's negative. If the answer of your Z-score is negative, and the question was, find the probability of Z less than. Then we're going to look at the probability, or we're going to locate the probability on the larger portion. Oh, sorry, on the smaller portion. What do I mean by smaller portion? I'm going to show you the table just now. If the answer is positive, like 1.5 is positive, 2.3 is they are positive, then we go going to look at the value from the larger portion. What do I mean? <clears throat> this is your past exam paper, 2018, May, June. There is a table called Appendix Probabilities Associated with Standard Normal Distribution. On this table, it has the Z score, which are your Z value. It has mean to Z. It has the larger portion and the smaller portion. The mean to Z, we're going to talk about it later on. The larger portion is what I was referring to. So <clears throat> going back to the presentation, if the score is negative, we go to the smaller portion. So it means if we're using this as an example, history, the probability of Patrick's score for history, we can go and find it where Z score is 1.40. We need to add zero at the end, so or 1.4. So it means we need to go to the table. We need to look for the smaller portion. We need to look under Z values. We are looking for 1.4. And sometimes it can be 1.40, depending on your table. As I can see here, <laughs> your, ta your table has two decimals. The space is a decimal in between. Sometimes UNISA's papers, when you print them out, <clears throat> because they are scanned, they miss the decimal point. You can see decimal, it's, it appears on some, but not on all. So when you see a space, know that there is a decimal point in between. <clears throat> so we're looking for 1.4, 1.1.4, 1 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.5, 1.4. There is 1.40. So we're looking for the last block, which is that one. So that's how you will find the probability. So <clears throat> the score is just the probability of <clears throat> of Patrick's uh, scoring up, uh, less than the rest of the class is just 0.8%.
because we're looking at the smaller portion. So what about the probability of scoring less than 1.5? You do the same. Because 1.5 is positive, remember the thingy? Let's go back to the presentation. It says, <clears throat> It says if the Z score is positive, we go to the larger side, right? So we know that we're looking for 1.4, so we need to go to the larger. <coughs> Just need to go back to my tax 1.5. So this is 1.53, so it should be on this side. So 1.5 will be 1.50. And we're looking for the larger portion. Therefore, it says <clears throat> they would have scored 93% above the uh, less than the rest of the <clears throat> um, the other uh, classmates. So that's how you read the table. So if the score is if the 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 sign is less than or equal, and the answer to that sign is negative, then we're going to look for the larger portion. If it's positive, then when it's positive, then it means it's on this side, because remember at the big, um, in the middle it's zero, so any value this side is negative, and any value this side is positive. So if it's positive, like the 1.5, then it will be somewhere, the shading will be from all this that is why the probability will be bigger than the rest of the other side <clears throat> so that's how you find the probabilities so if the i'm not going to come to this table i've already showed you the table uh, and i'm not going to do the e example we've used that one like i said we're going to run through it as quickly as possible so you can see that for x of 18 to find the probability, we go and find the Z value. The Z value is 0 0.12 and we go and find the probability because the it's positive and it is less than. We go to the larger side and we find the probability. <clears throat> so I want to come to when it is greater than. So when the question is if it's bigger than or greater than or equal, greater greater than or equal, which means it's got greater than or equal, the value. <clears throat> if it's negative, we go to the larger side. If it's positive, we go to the smaller side. So <clears throat> the only way to remember this is by drawing a picture for yourself. As you can see on this, if I'm talking about greater than means the bigger side, right? So if the answer I get is negative, if it's negative, it will be here and it will go this side. As you can see, the shading on this side will be larger than the shading, the remainder, the thing that I didn't shade. Can you see? If the answer was negative, I will be using the larger portion. That is why we go to the larger portion of the table. If <clears throat> the answer is positive, like you say, you see here, the answer is positive, so it will be positive from this side of a zero, and we know that it's greater than, right? So then the shading will be a smaller shading, so it means we go to the smaller portion. <clears throat> so how would you know whether you need to calculate greater than or the less than, use your your hand. Left means less, right means more, right? So you can use your current for the left to point the direction. <clears throat> so left will always stay less, right will always be more, because when you are right, you weigh more. When you are wrong or left, you have left current. I don't know how else I can tell you how to determine which one is which. But if you use your, your arm left less, it will also guide you in terms of 
how you find the answer. And always remember the belly shape. It's always cut in the middle and in the middle that is your mean, <coughs> which is always equals to zero. So therefore it means anything, this side will be negative of zero, that side will be negative, it will be positive. And that's how you will determine which area you need to shade and which area you leave out. And that will guide you in terms of how you're gonna get to the table. And that is for the greater than. Now, we also have the between. With the between, it's different. To find the probability of between, <laughs> we can do this two ways. We can use, depending on whether we find the answer is in negative and positive and things like that, or we can just use the mean to z. So for greater than and less than, we use smaller and larger portion. For between, always use the mean to z tape, uh, column. So we're going to use this column, mean to z for the between, anything between. These two, they use less than or greater than, or less than or equal or greater than or equal. The between, we will always use mean to z. So let's look at how we do this. <clears throat> so let's suppose that a normal, uh, X is normal, uh, distributed with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5. And we need to find the probability that X lies between 18 and 18.6. Now, in order for you not to get confused <coughs> with this, you can calculate the Z value for the first value and calculate the Z value for the second value, like I did here. We calculate the Z value for 18 which will be 18 minus the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of five, because this was our X, and we get that it is zero. And then we do the same, we calculate the mean <coughs> of 18 point, oh sorry, X of 18.6 minus the mean of 18 divided by the standard deviation of five. And we get that it is 0 0.12. <laughs> Uh, somebody is not muted. I don't know who or the Polini. Yeah. Okay, so now we did find Z. Z lies between. Can I ask? Polini, can you please mute yourself? Because I tried muting you and. Okay, thank you. Please remember when you come to the session, uh, please try to mute yourself all the time, especially if there will be some noises in your background. <coughs> if your noise are like your uh, radio playing and they play music, and we are explaining certain concepts, it affects what we load onto the platform because uh, music most of the time is copyrighted, right? So it will say we need to cut out the copyright information before we load it. And we don't want to cut out the chunk of <clears throat> the explanation. So please be considerate. Every time you come to the session, make sure that you just mute yourself especially if you're not sure whether your environment is conducive enough for you to participate with your mic on. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the between. <clears throat> so between, we know that we calculated our Z lies between 0 and 1, 0 0.12. In order for us to go find them, the probability, remember we said we're going to use the different, uh, not the difference, but we're going to use the two values that it's located between. So we know that it was located between 0 and 12. Ignore the top one. I was explaining this to another group of students who do not do psych. So for you, you just need to concentrate on the mean to Z. <clears throat> so 
we go for the first one. We know that the Z value was zero. We just go to the zero table and find the mean to Z value. Or oh, because this is also another table from another module. Let's use the one from your module. So our one is zero. So there is zero. Mean to Z is zero. The other one. So we got the probability of Z lies between 0 0.12 and 2. So we need to go to 0 0.12 and here is 0 0.12. And we find the mean to Z value there. You just add those two values and they will give you your probability of between. Just adding the 0 plus 0, 0,0478 will give us 0, 0,0478. And that's how you will find the probability of between. Now, it's not as simple as this. Let's look at an example from your module. <clears throat> look at the graph based on the frequency distribution of measurement of variable X from normally distributed data, which is produced below. Using the information provided in the graph, calculate the probability that the measurement made at random on this particular scale will fall in the area under the curve colored in gray. So already they are telling us that we need to calculate the probability of the between. First, we need to find, so, they gave us the normal distribution table with the Z values, which are raw scores, but they also gave us the mean, population mean and the standard deviation. <clears throat> the question says, select the answer closest to the calculated probability from the options below. Now, based on the information on the graph above, there's not much. But what we can deduce from there is that they asked us to calculate the probability, which is what we know. And they also told us something that we need to find that probability that falls within the area underneath the curve and they shared that area. Now, with that area underneath the curve, they highlighted certain things. One of them is 25. So it means we need to find the probability that our x variable lies between 25, which is the smallest value this side, but also on this side, the graph ends on 50, so it lies between 25 and 50. <laughs> so because it lies between those, we can go and calculate the z value for 25, which means we need to use the formula. And that will be 25 minus, because your X will always be given in the question, right? So here is my question. We need to find this probability. It's my question. So 25 is X. Our mean is 40. Divide by the standard deviation is 10. And that is equals to <clears throat> 25 minus 40 equals divide by 10 equals change minus 1.4 minus 1.5 sorry 1.5 that is z of 25 now I'm not gonna do all the work by myself i'm just gonna give you work as well go and calculate z of 50 the Z score for 50, your X minus the mean, divide by the standard deviation. Calculate that and let me do when you are done. Even if it's one person done. <clears throat> so that I can also rest my voice. I'm done. Okay, so help us. So then it's 50 minus 40 divided by 10, that equals one. 
it's 10, 10 divided by 10 equals 1. Yeah, so I'm going to put here 0, 0 because the table has two decimals. And also on this one, I'm just going to add the 0 at the end so that it is, <coughs> it is two decimals. Okay, so we do have our probabilities. So we know that our probabilities of Z lies between minus 1.50 and 1.00. So we can go to the mean to Z. So let's go to mean to Z. Let's make this smaller. Okay. <coughs> mean to Z. We're looking for mean to Z of uh, Z uh, 1.5. Z 1. Okay. So in the meantime, I can also identify because we're looking for 1 as well. So there is 1. And I know that the first column is mean to Z. So we have <coughs> three zero point zero point three four one three zero point three four one three I'm just gonna use plus and then go look for one point five so one point five we will find on this side one point five zero so we just need one point five zero mean to z <clears throat> Uh, 1.5 mean to Z will be that one. Plus 0 0.4332. 0 0.4332. 0 0.4332. So the probability of between this right here, that will be 0.4332. Plus 0.3413 equals. And I just need to change this. And the answer is 0 0.775. If I round this correctly, because the number to the right of where I want to leave my digit, it's bigger than 5 or equals to 5. Then I must add 1 to that number. Because I just need three decimals. As I can see here, they are... <laughs> There are three three decimal answer and one decimal answer. So even if I look at one decimal, it will not be that one. So the answer is zero comma uh, seven zero comma seven seven four four five. And if we round up, we get the answer of zero comma seven seven five, which is option two. You need to, <clears throat> you need to be able to also. <coughs> Round off correctly in your module. <clears throat> so you need to learn about the rounding off as well. So if the number to the right of where you want to round off to, it's greater than or equals to five, you add one. If it's less than five, you do nothing. So if the answer here was 0, 0,7743, we will just leave the answer as 0, 0,774. <clears throat> Okay, and just to recap before we do extra other activities or exercises from your module, um, we have learned so far about the basic concepts of normal distribution, especially when we want to standardize the uh, row score by using Z score um, formula, which is your X value minus your population standard deviation. <coughs> oh, sorry, minus your population mean divided by the population standard deviation. We also learned about the basic concepts of normal distribution that a normal distribution is distributed with the mean <coughs> with the mean of zero and standard deviation. I'm just writing in eight and the standard deviation of one. 
and we also learned that in order to find the probability, we first need to find this or standardize our values by using the Z score. And if our Z value, we need to find the probability of Z less than A. If the answer is negative, then we use the smaller portion, right? If the answer is positive, then we use the larger portion. That's what we've learned. We also learned that if we need to find the probability of Z greater than a value, and if the Z value, the answer is negative, then we're going to use the larger portion. As you can see that it's an opposite of, of that side. <clears throat> and if it's positive, then we're going to use the smaller portion. If we find there between the probability that Z lies between two values A and B, then we're going to use the sum of the mean to Z. Mean to Z values, right? That's all what we have learned. <laughs> that should set you aside. Uh, uh, ready for you to answer any question relating to Z scores. Okay, so let's look at more exercises. So some of the questions that comes in the exam looks like this. We just dealt with this. A standardized normal distribution has the mean of mm and the standard deviation of mm of dot dot. Which one is the correct answer? One. It's number one. It has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Number two, <clears throat> study the following figure. As you can see, there is our figure. Uh, the figure is representing the distribution of an X value. So the X values are lying around somewhere here. <clears throat> On this, they've given us the standard deviation, they've given us the mean, they've given you your X value. <clears throat> because this is your X value and this is your X value somewhere there. They just did that and they have shaded this area. So you must just pay attention to this shaded area as well. So this I'm just deciding what I'm seeing in front of me. What is the probability that a specific number <laughs> drawn purely at random from the variable di um, distributed like this would fall in the gray area. So anyway, I don't have a gray uh, uh, pen. I have a red, so we're going to assume that this red is your gray area. <clears throat> that is that it would be equal or greater than, so equal or greater than, remember, <clears throat> than the X value of 55. So it means they want you to find the probability that X is greater than or equals 255. But since they have identified this and they've shaded the gray area, it should give you some insight in terms of where you're going to find that probability when you answer the question. Okay. Choose the answer closest to the correct one in this form. So the first thing that you need to do, you still remember, is to calculate the Z score, which you use X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now you will tell me, oh, but I don't see the things that you are talking about. So here they use the sample mean. Remember, the sample mean is X bar. So. They have used the sample mean and they use the sample standard deviation. So I can also go back and change this. Instead of using population mean, I can use X bar. And instead of using sigma, I can use the sample standard deviation. So it's still going to give me the same answer. <clears throat> this is for the population. This is for the sample. Sample population. So depending on what they have given you, you can always interchange. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter that much. <clears throat> because if they've given you the information, you just use that. 
So our X is always given in the question. So this is what we want to find the probability of the shaded area. Our X is 155 minus our mean. They have given you it's 150. <coughs> Your standard deviation is five. What is the answer? One fifty five minus hundred and fifty divided by five equals. Do you also get one as your answer? Yes, one. Okay. So tell me which side is it the smaller side or the bigger side? The it's very side. clear. Hmm? The smaller side. It will be the smaller side because the shaded area shaded the smaller area, which makes it easier for you to see which side. So we're going to go to the smaller side and look for one on the Z score. <laughs> so there is our one. And our smaller side is the last column. So we go to one. I hope you are able to see because I made the table smaller. You go to one and you go to the smallest area. So the answer is 0, 0,15. So the probability that Z is greater than or equals to one is 0, 0,15. What did we get? 158. Eight, seven. But the answer here is in two decimals. So two decimals, the number to the right, there is the right to where we want to stop. We want to stop there. So it means we need to add one to the rest number. So the answer will be 0, 0,16. Where is the answer? <clears throat> easy, right? Easy, 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 easy. Okay, so let's look at more examples, unless if there are more questions. Let's see, let's go to the chat. No questions. Any question? Do you have any questions? Yes, yes uh, Mrs. Boy, I just wanted to ask you, um, they, I, I get stuck now. You have a sample on the right and then a population on the left. And if I look at the 150, there's an X and there's a uh, like a stripe above it. So I'm just a little bit confused now. Um, why is there an X with a stripe at the top? What, what does it mean when you say the sample? Oh, the sample mean, okay, so that's just it. Okay. So it means um, you didn't watch the recordings of last week. We did speak about the statistics okay, and okay. the parameters. We spoke about this. So a population parameter uses the mu. So we use the Greek letters for to describe the population. And then we okay. use the Roman letters to describe the sample statistics. So these are called population parameters, the mu, the sigma. Those are your sample, uh, your, sorry, your population mean, your population standard deviation. For the sample, we use the normal letters that you know of. But also some of them, like the mean, is not just the normal letter. <laughs> we put the bar at the top. X bar represents the sample statistic, which is called the sample mean. S, you can see there is an S. Mm -hmm. And S represents the sample statistic called sample standard deviation, whereas this one is population standard deviation. <laughs> okay. So it doesn't change anything. So in the previous section we were using the population mean and we were using this population standard deviation now on this one they didn't give you the population parameters they gave you the sample statistics okay okay sorry can i just ask you which uh, section you did last week i, I only received no we just email. covered yeah we just covered introduction to the psych 
we just did at the high level overview um, <clears throat> what is um, what are the the variables or oh, yeah what are the variables what are the constructs what um what is the population what is a sample we just did the introduction to basic statistics at a high level for your module Okay. So I can I can go module. back and still still go listen to that. Yes, and then we looked at the sampling um, methods and all that. So yeah, it's okay. just uh, okay. the basic things that we covered. Okay, I'll I'll go have a look and listen to that. Thank you. No worries. Okay, so we left with ten minutes. I have about nine questions in this. The notes will be uploaded as well. And you can go through the activities. If you have any questions, you can always ask. <clears throat> yes. So another question. <clears throat> Joseph scores 60% in history test class and the class mean is 65 and the standard deviation is 10%. Um, and 50% in biology. The class mean is 53 and the standard deviation is 12%. Use Z score to decide which statement is true. Relative to the rest of the class, Joseph does. Da, 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 da. So we need to choose whichever statement better suited for that. So it means we're going to need to calculate the Z score for history. Z score for history, which will be X minus the population mean divide by the standard deviation. So what are we given for history? His score, which is our X, class mean, which is our mu, standard deviation, which is our sigma. So we can just substitute. So as you can see, <clears throat> most of the time, I've applied the Newman's prompt uh, problem solving framework, right? What is it that we are asked? I identified what is it that exactly they want us to do because I said use the Z scores to determine which statement is true, the relative um, rest of the class Joseph does, and what is it that we need to choose in terms of this and what what are the facts given? I've identified my facts in terms of my X, my mu, my sigma. What is the formula that I need to use? I selected the formula. And I'm just going to substitute before I take my calculator. So those are the steps that, or the skills that we want to impact to you. So before I take my calculator, first me see, put in the values here. So 60% is 0 0.60 minus 65 is 0 0.65 divided by 10% is 0 0.10. And you just calculate the answer there. Go to my calculator. 0.6 minus 0.65 divide by 0.1 equals. You will notice that I don't put the 0 0.60 and 10 as well because the calculator knows that whether I put it or not. And also I did I don't use zero point. But if you feel if it makes you is feel at ease, you can use zero point. You you, you need to do that. Okay, so the answer is minus zero point five. So that will be minus zero point five. And I can just put zero at the end or not. I don't even have to put zero at the end. You can just leave it at that because we're working with Z score. So the next Z score is for biology. So the formula I need for biology, it's X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Biology test, the score is X, the mean, and the standard deviation. Already I have identified the fact 0 0.5 minus. 0 0.53 divided by 0 0.12. <clears throat> Take my calculator. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.53 <laughs> equals 
divide by 0.12 equals and change will be 0, comma minus 0 0.25. So now, before I even look at my, my answers, I need to make a decision based on what I see here. So history has a standard deviation or a Z score of minus 0 0.5, which means it's 0 0.5 far away from the rest of um, the other plus mean, right? Biology has the score of 0 0.25, which means it's almost closer, but be still below, but closer to the rest of the class. So it means which one? Because this is minus. Minus means below. So <clears throat> the far away, it means the far away from, it's even worse, right? So a 0 0.5 score will mean worse than a 0 0.25. So let's go to our statements now. Since I've determined that a negative means worse because negative means below the class average, therefore it means it's worse. But the bigger the number of the worst will mean that that subject is even worse than the other subject, regardless. So now <clears throat> let's look at this. The first statement says, Joseph does better in biology than in history. Is that true? Biology, you've got 0 0.25. History's got 0 0.5. Remember, they are both worse. Which one will be better than the other? Is it biology or history? Biology is better than history. Biology will be better than history, right? Because number two says better in history than in biology. That won't be true. The third one says equally well in history and in biology, but we know that they did worse because they scored less than the class average anyway. So the correct answer will be number one. <clears throat> Relative to his class, Joseph does better in biology than in history because the score in biology is almost closer, even though it's below the class average, but it's closer to uh, the class average. And that's how you will interpret your Z scores. <clears throat> okay, This is just another property that you just need to know. The area underneath or the area under the normal curve equals to Is it equals to its mean? Is it equals to its standard deviation? Or is it equals to one? The area under the curve, which means the sum of all the values or the probabilities under the curve. It's one. Number three. It's number, number three. three. Yeah. Hey, you guys, you were listening to me. I can't believe that because I said this right in the beginning <laughs> at six o'clock, at 10 past six, at 20 past, 28 past seven, you still remember this? Oh, you guys. <clears throat> you make my heart home. You make me home. You make me even no longer feel sick while helping you. Okay, so we've got one minute left, but let's see if we can squeeze one minute of this one. Joseph, uh, oh, where do I see Joseph? John received 45 marks for his psychology test. The average mark for this test is 35 and the standard deviation is 10. What is John's score? Now, Z score. Now we need to just calculate John Z score. So we know that John 
John score will be calculated by X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what is it that they have given us? They've given you the X because that is the score that John received. They've given you the average mark, which is your mean, your standard deviation, which is your sigma. <clears throat> we'll just come and substitute into the formula, which is 45 minus 35 divided by 10. And this one I'm giving it to you to answer. <clears throat> The answer is one, number one. The answer is one, which is number one. Okay, so just for the sake of capturing everything on the video in case you don't get the chance to download the record, the, the notes, you can come back to the recording and look at the rest of the questions. So this is one of the other questions. Also, they are almost similar. So if you must start answering one type of a question. You can do the rest of the question if you are asked, because this is the same as the one that we just answered. Compare whether they do better in this one or the other. <clears throat> so you just calculate the score, the, the uh, Z scores for English and geography and compare and say which one they do better in. This is almost similar to the one that we did as an example, but now here they're asking you to find the probability. And we used some of them as an example during our session uh, when we were demonstrating the table. So you will go and calculate this. Remember the probability if it's less than. Are we using the answer? Is it negative or positive? You need to know whether you're using the smaller portion or the larger portion as well. Things like that. If it's greater than, because yeah, uh, they say it's better. This is better. Better means greater than or equal. Equal or better than, then it means it's greater than. So you just need to make sure that you calculate that correctly. Uh, the next other question also asked you to calculate the Z-score. They've given you the information at the top. What is going to confuse you with this is the following. At the top, they gave you a whole lot of other numbers. Like they say, there are 100 kids or 100 learners. The questionnaire has, ha it has 50 questions. That has nothing to do with what you are asked to do. What you are asked is they gave you the statement, the mean, the standard deviation, and they say respectively. So when they say respectively, so it means this corresponds to the mean, standard deviation is eight because first they mentioned the standard, the mean, and then the standard deviation. So as well, in terms of the numbers, the first one mentioned will, the value of the first one mentioned corresponds to the value or the, the the one that was mentioned first and here they gave you your x value and you just calculate your z that's how easy it is straightforward so some of these questions come from your past exam paper some of them comes from your tutorial letters and especially this ones where i didn't have some tutorial letter they come from your previous tutorial letter like 2021 or 2019 tutorial letters as well. And in this one, they are just asking you to find the probability. And here you just need to make sure that you understand the question that is asked. It says less than. So remember that less than is this sign. Less, right, left, left, less, less, left. <clears throat> and then you can go and find the probability. Remember to apply the correct way of finding the probability by either using the smaller portion or the larger portion. And that concludes today's session. Are there any questions, comments, queries? Anything you want to know? I have a question. It's Nandembeko speaking. Uh, with regard to the, um, uh, the attendance register, I'm mm -hmm. using my phone, so I can't seem to find it. Uh, it's in the chat. 
thank you also for reminding me about the attendance register. <coughs> it's in the chat. I've just posted it on the chat. Okay. And just want to see. Okay. So let's see. Uh, okay. I can see why there are so many confusions. I've got three, four, four, hmm. one, two, three, four. Why four? All of them are not even, and that, that is the one that you need to select. You need to select the one that says, I don't know, <clears throat> they should have changed it, uh, but that is the one that you need to select. Research analytics literacy for psychology students. On the UNISA platform, it's something else. It's called basic statistics for women science. I hope it doesn't confuse you. Um, let's see if they didn't add it here as such. No, they didn't. But that is the thing that you need to. So that is the one. Research analytics literacy for psychology students. That's the one that everyone needs to sign up to. Uh, this one's. Uh, for statistics, pure statistics, and this is the basic numeracies. I hope you are able to get to that. I just need to go out of this. Okay. okay. <clears throat> are there any other questions? If there are no questions, I'm going to stop the recording now. Sorry. Just give me one minute of your time. Again, I know that we are over time.